So for Castle Nathria, your consumables are pretty much going to be standard with anywhere else in Mythic Plus. You're going to do your oil, you're going to do your flask, rune if you feel like using a rune, Advantage rune if you're progressing on a particular boss and you want a little bit more DPS and a little bit less damage taken. Other than that, you would have to sim your character for what food gives you the most DPS. For me, given that I'm basically at crit cap, that food is haste, aside from a feast. A feast will always be the biggest DPS, no matter what your character stats, at least for Frost Mage in 9.0 and 9.0.5. Let's not forget our armor kits. In terms of talents, you pretty much run the standard set of talents for any Frost content for the raid. With, of course, Shimmer or Ice Flows being up to user preference, if you have a Frost Mage that you can swap Focus Magic with, provided you're both at like 23% or less crit, Focus Magic. If you're not too confident with your Rune of Power placement and you're okay with a slight DPS loss, Encanter's Flow, and then the rest is the usual. And now, the general theme for maximizing Frost DPS in Castle Nathria, or most raids for that matter, is going to be... Proper usage of movement abilities and procs to minimize downtime due to mechanics, combined with proper CD usage in relation to boss mechanics. What I mean by this is using abilities like Alter Time, Ice Flows, and Shimmer to perform mechanics without letting them have a negative impact on your DPS, and being aware of boss mechanics that will cause movement and avoiding using things like Root of Power right before you'll be forced to move from said Root of Power due to a mechanic. Once you have that down, the rest comes to simply knowing your rotation in the context of boss fight and executing it properly. So performing your single target rotation for things like Hungry Destroyer, swapping to two target with Blizzard usage for Huntsman, funneling on things like Council and Sire, etc. Tiny disclaimer, if you have Ice Bite Conduit at 226 item level, it's pretty much interchangeable with Dauntless Duelist and it becomes better than Dauntless Duelist when you have like the tiniest add in the fight. So if you have adds on Inerva, if you have people getting trapped on Artificer, already your 226 Ice Bite is pulling ahead of your Dauntless Duelist. That being said, if you don't have a 226 Ice Bite, Dauntless Duelist is a pretty considerable single target DP PS upgrade for you. So quickly going through all the bosses and kind of highlighting what legendaries, consumables, and conduits you should run for them. Shriek Wing is pretty standard. You're gonna run Slick Ice, you're gonna do your Phantom Fire, and your Dauntless Duelist. This is your pretty standard single target. There's no adds, there's no nothing. I'm just focusing on single target setup. Huntsman, you can run both Freezing Winds or Glacial Fragments. Freezing Winds simps better for my character in a two target scenario by a pretty considerable chunk because you're gonna have more than one one target you run your spectral intellect potion and because you're doing more than one target you also do ice spike one quick rule of thumb regardless of the number of targets if ever you're running freezing winds you always run ice bite whether it's in raid whether it's in mythic plus the way freezing winds works is by getting you more fingers of frost procs so not running ice bite is pretty counterintuitive to how that legendary works hungering destroyer again it's your single target profile you got your slick eyes phantom fire dauntless duelist with an Nerva, you can, if you want, run Ice Bite instead of Dauntless Duelist. You'll do less boss DPS, but you, depending on how long the adds are alive for, are going to do more overall DPS because of all the Ice Lances cleaving onto the adds. For Kael'thas, again, it's similar to Huntsman. You're pretty much going to go either Freezing Winds or Glacial Fragments. I personally prefer Freezing Winds. Glacial Fragments for three or more targets is a raw DPS upgrade. So it's going to depend on how quickly the ads get murdered. If you're going to have a lot of uptime on a lot of ads, you can gain more DPS with Glacial Fragments. If the ads are going to get bursted down pretty quickly, Freezing Winds is solid. You're going to have a lot of downtime to regain cooldown on your Frozen Orb. If you're doing Mythic Progression for Kael'thas, there is a slight difference in that you have a shield to burst. So for Mythic Progression, if you're struggling on bursting the shield, I would definitely recommend Freezing Winds to help with that. Artificer, again... It is our standard Slick Eyes, Phantom Fire, Dauntless Duelist. If your raid group consistently has people accidentally 
stepping in the traps then ice bites probably going to come out ahead for you if they're near the boss council is the one that has a lot of variety because the order in which you kill the bosses is going to dictate how the fight goes technically all three legendaries have a place for council be it on heroic or mythic difficult i personally prefer freezing winds over glacial fragments or slick ice but here are some scenarios in which you would use glacial fragments or slick ice if you can reliably get all three bosses stacked the whole time and you're gonna have a lot of waiters alive going near the bosses glacial fragments is going to come out maybe on top depending on how many ads you pad if you don't have freezing winds crafted glacial fragments is acceptable and now if you're gonna have the bosses pretty spread out say you're pugging heroic or you're killing free to last and there's no ads no nothing slick ice is a pretty solid option if you're progressing mythic and you're killing niklaus last you're killing free to last then you know something like slick ice is going to be good for you so they're all pretty situational the one i would definitely recommend is freezing winds but you can make all three work depending on whether the bosses are stacked for freezing winds and glacial fragments versus slick ice whether they're by themselves etc and because the bosses are stacked and you're going to have a lot of cleave damage i wouldn't bother using phantom fire for this boss i would use the spectral intellect potion instead and along with that the ice wide conduit for sludge fist now this one is an interesting boss with the 9.0.5 changes before 9.0.5 it was pretty much slick ice and that was it end of discussion with 9.0.5 Freezing Winds has come into play because it lines up perfectly with every pillar if you precast Blizzard when you're going to pull the boss. If you're running Freezing Winds, make sure you run Ice Bite. If you're running Slick Ice, don't list to is the way. Either way, Phantom Fire is the potion to use for that boss. Stone Legion Generals, going back to Huntsman, Freezing Winds is better for two target. Spectral Intellect Potion and Ice Bite Conduits are going to be your best bet. If you're doing Mythic Progression, you're going to have to think about what you want to do more. Do you want more raw AI? AoE damage or do you want more priority funnel damage in terms of glacial fragments versus freezing winds for sire you can either run slick eyes dauntless duelist if you want the most single target boss damage if you want the lego that doesn't feel so horrible and plays nicely with the fight freezing winds is pretty good you have a lot of downtime to kind of regain the cooldown on your freezing winds you have ads you can blizzard to lower the cooldown of frozen orb both are pretty acceptable just reminder again if you're running freezing winds make sure you pick ice fight as your conduit instead of dauntless duelist main decision to be made here on this boss for higher dps is going to be if you get your icv veins back off the cooldown before he transitions you're going to want to look at the boss's health you're going to want to make that decision of do i think i'm going to be able to fit in a full icv veins after the transition or is he going to die shortly after the if he's going to die shortly after the transition you can go ahead and do icv veins as soon as it's back up before he transitions and if you're not you can go ahead and hold it for after the transition when he's doing this screech you can just as easily blink to get to his other side Three, and two, basically avoid those one. mechanics you can also dodge the discs by physically moving in between them with ice flows or procs if you want to stay in your root of power if you accidentally eat a disc you can ice block to remove the horrified and carry on about your day on Mythic, you can't physically see the discs, so you're going to want to make sure that you don't Rune of Power right before the Screech is going to come out, otherwise you're going to lose uptime on your Rune of Power. If you get this, you can go ahead and alter time, run it out of the group, drop it off and alter time back. If you want to avoid this, you can go ahead and line aside it right at the last second, and then continue DPSing afterwards. You can use an Ice Barrier while you're hiding since you can't DPS a boss anyway. If you're out of position to hide behind the pillar, you can always use Door of Shadows or Blink to get behind it. One important thing to note is he's not immune to damage until after he finishes casting Blood Shroud. Three, two, so if you want to fit in one. a little bit extra DPS, you can go ahead and DPS him right until he casts it, at which point he is immune to all sorts of damage. In this phase, there's nothing really you can do to increase your DPS, considering he's immune to damage, but you can do things like crap your ice barrier, you can do things like cast your mirror image. In Mythic difficulty for that fight, there's going to be a lantern that you can either pick up or you can walk into. 
that Lantern is going to give you a debuff, which allows you to see some of his abilities, his discs specifically. Otherwise, they're hidden from you. In terms of how to do more DPS, it's pretty much going to be the same as Heroic. There's no real difference in the way the fight is structured. For Huntsman, you're going to want to make sure you're working in blizzards for your two target rotation in conjunction with either Freezing Winds or Glacial Fragments legendaries to maximize your DPS. Blizzard serves a couple of purposes here. It reduces the cooldown on your Frozen Orb, which benefits Frost Mage period, but it's particularly beneficial with Freezing Winds, considering your damage comes from Frozen Orb proccing a lot of Fingers of Frost when wearing that legendary. It also grants a 100% chance for Glacial Fragments to proc every time you hit Ice Lands on your two targets, which comes out to a lot of splash damage, as with the Splitting Ice talent, each cast of Ice Lands deals four instances of Glacial Fragments damage onto two targets. Ice Lands A procs Glacial Fragments onto targets 1 and 2, and Ice Lands B also procs Glacial Fragments onto targets 1 and 2. A point to note if you're running the Glacial Fragments Legendary for this fight is once you have three or more targets stacked, so likely during the Ghost Dog DPS phase, your Glacial Fragments rotation changes from single target rotation with Blizzard on cooldown to Blizzard on cooldown with Iceland spam for the most overall raw AoE DPS. And then I do like using nice. Mirrors of Torment on Bargas because it'll proc more often than Huntsman. Um, but that's personal preference. If you get the lunch mechanic, you can either stack in range, or if you're nowhere near a group of range, you can always blink into melee. And as with any mechanic, if you just set down your rune of power and then you have to blink into melee, you can always alter time right before you blink, go ahead and blink, and then alter time back. If you're on CC duty for the ads, it helps to have some sort of mouse over polymorph macro, so you can go ahead and just mouse over polymorph the ad when it spawns and get back to DPSing. And as with any mechanic you have to move out for, if you get Hal, you can always alter time, blink, drop it off, alter time back, and minimize your DPS downtime on the boss. Now, if you ever get Sin Seeker and you're low on health, you can always Ice Walk to be safe, which brings us to our changes for Mythic difficulty. The only change really in how the fight plays out is that once the first phase is over, anyone hit by the Sin Seeker spawns an ad that needs to be healed, so the way most guilds do it is they assign immunities to soak so that those ads can get healed up quickly and help their raid members not die. This boss is basically going to test your ability to properly use CDs and procs to minimize downtime on your DPS while moving due to mechanics. When you have Expunge, you basically have three ways to deal with it. The easiest being Alter Time usage, followed by Ice Flows or Shimmer usage, and either pre-positioning or usage of procs to facilitate movement away from the group and back towards the group. Additional things to mention for the setups. If you use Alter Time while you have Miasma, it will recover the health that you lost. And only preposition for Expunge if you have no other mechanics coming up. If you get Volatile Ejection, you can just as easily move away from your group while staying in your Rune of Power. And lastly, to reinforce this point, proper usage of movement abilities, Blink, Shimmer, Ice Flows, and Procs will help you keep uptime on your DPS for things like Consume or any other mechanic. Main difference on Mythic is that Miasma applies a stacking debuff to those that help soak, so you split up into four groups and take turns moving in and out of the Miasma. Because of this, wait just a tiny bit off the start of the fight to pop your cooldowns and set down your rune of power. Make sure you quickly make your way to your designated group, and because of Miasma applying a stacking debuff, players with Miasma will move out of the stack during Consume. Going through the mechanics, you can just use procs or ice flows to soak puddles near your character while staying in your rune of power. If you get the beam, you can use alter time in conjunction with blink or door of shadows to quickly line the orbs and get back to DPSing the boss. Note that if the other DPS in your group are slow at doing the mechanic, you'll have to cancel alter time early to prevent getting teleported back before the mechanic is executed. One important way to get more DPS on a Nerva is to save your frozen orb if an outwave is coming up in a bit and make sure you cast Blizzard on multiple targets to reduce the cooldown on Frozen Orb. Be careful not to hold the orb too long, as your timers can sometimes be inaccurate for when ads are spawning, at least if using DBM. If you get the root mechanic, you can either blink out of it if you're running Ice Flows, 
or get a freedom or tiger slus to move into position. The difference on mythic is that there are now four orbs, so you make two lines running through two orbs each that intersect. You can no longer fully empty containers, the anima merely gets distributed amongst the other containers, so you just burn the boss before any container can reach 100%. Because of this, there's a common immuning strat where people pop magic immunities right before the ads come out to prevent them from ever spawning so more DPS can go into the boss. With that being said, while you can run freezing winds for this fight, I wouldn't recommend it if you're doing the immune strat. But if you're doing it on heroic or not immuning, then make sure you have a frozen orb for each ad set and try to get another one via Blizzard's cooldown reduction before the ads die if possible. This is mostly a healer fight with a few basic DPS checks, so just go ahead and kill adds quickly and efficiently while having enough CDs for the boss itself. In the initial phase, make sure you interrupt Vile Occultist's Scornful Cast so that they can be stacked and cleaved efficiently. Save Icy Veins for the boss phase unless you know it'll be back up by then. Precast Blizzard when the boss is about to spawn. Stack for Ember Blast, or you're likely to die unless you have an Ice Block readily available. You can Frost Nova or Polymorph the Stolen Fusers if you need hard CC, otherwise cleaving them is an efficient way of dealing with them. On Mythic Difficulty, there's a shield you have to DPS through, otherwise the raid is going to wipe. If you're having a hard time breaking this shield, you can save your procs, trinkets, frozen orbs for the shield phase and make sure you're using Rune of Power, or icy veins on the shield to break it more efficiently. The more people that soak ember blast on mythic difficulty, the smaller the spread becomes. So you want to go ahead and soak with your group instead of ice blocking by yourself if possible. This is another one of those bosses with potentially a lot of movement, so you get to test your full movement kit to minimize downtime. I recommend taking the Invis Movement Speed trait for Incantation of Swiftness for things like Carrying Seeds, Avoiding Annihilation. It does start working from the second you press Invis and not when you actually go invisible. If the boss is getting moved at the start, make sure you hold Frozen Orb until the boss is in position. If you get the tear on you, you can make use of the Warlock Gate if there is one. Use Alter Time with your Door of Shadows or Blinks, whatever you have available. With the Beams, you have so much time to actually move. You can finish your cast, wait for a proc, use Ice Flows, etc. There's no need to hurry. Similarly with traps, they take a long time to actually activate and in the event you walk into a trap, you can always blink if you're running ice flows or ice block. How the ghosts work is that they'll always spawn behind your character, so you can face towards the direction you want to run and give yourself a head start. You can either use the portals to avoid the ghosts, alter time, blink, wait for it to almost catch up to you and then alter time again. Or if you accidentally get hit by the ghost, at any time on any difficulty, you can simply ice block out of the mind control. For seeds, there's so much you can do. You can alter time right where you are, door of shadows to the seed, blink to the drop off, drop it off, and alter time back to keep DPSing. You can alter time next to the portal, door of shadows to the seed, alter time back, go through the portal and drop it off. You can get to your seed before it spawns, then simply blink to drop it off and get back via the portal. Sometimes a Warlock Gate will be available to you, it's 100% up to you. Same with the Annihilates, there's so many different ways you can do this without relying on tears. You can use movement abilities like your Invis Conduit, Roars, Totems to completely avoid the mechanic. You can use Alter Time, wait until it's almost done and then Alter Time back. You can even use Traps if you're running Ice Flows and simply blink out of the trap once the Annihilate ends. Or if for whatever reason you feel like it, you could use the trap, stay in the trap, and then ice block. You can even just get sucked all the way to the center and ice block in it if you want. On Mythic, there's two main differences, one of which doesn't really affect Frost Mages. Mind Controls are now permanent, but we have two ice blocks, so it's a non-issue for us. Additionally, you'll get a lot of ability overlaps like Ghosts during the Annihilate when you also have to do the Seeds. Mastering your seed movement abilities comes in handy for this. What I like to do for a few of these is alter time, door of shadows to the seed, blink to the portal, drop it off, wait for the ghost to spawn, and as soon as they spawn, alter time and keep DPSing the boss without really having to worry about kiting the ghosts. At its heart, this can be a funnel fight or single target fight depending on the strategy used.
Freezing Winds works great all around for any variation of this fight. Slick Ice works fine for any strats that completely eliminate any adds, such as Free to Last. Glacial Fragments will let you pad if you have a lot of adds near the boss and not a lot of boomies to help clean up the adds. The main takeaway from this fight is to always capitalize on Blizzard usage. Use Blizzard on multiple targets, but don't worry about Blizzard casts if the boss will transition before you get your Frozen Orb back. In a similar vein, plan your CDs accordingly. Don't use Rune of Power right before a recital or right before the bosses will transition. Don't use Icy Veins if you'll only get to use part of it before the transition. The faster you kill the attendants, the faster you can go back to DPSing the boss. I personally recommend Ice Flows for things like recital, you can keep casting while moving for it. For the dance phase, you can use any combination of Dwarf Shadows, Blink, Movement Speeds, or Warlock Aid if available to quickly get into position. Additionally, on Mythic, there's a mechanic that puts a debuff on players which causes them to die if they don't jump 3 times within 30 seconds. Ice Block will not save you from this. Anytime one of these players jumps, they deal raid-wide damage, so healing cooldowns are typically organized around this. On Mythic difficulty, even after you kill bosses, their abilities linger. This is to say killing Frida will still spawn a ghost that casts and needs to be interrupted, killing Stavros would, will still give you dark recitals, etc. The general strategy for Mythic is a stack strategy that allows for a lot of Blizzard usage to funnel damage onto the priority target. If you're doing a strategy like Niklaus Last, it is worth noting that the adds he spawns are targetable and damageable during the dance phase. So you can, in theory, ignore those specific adds and then DPS them down during the intermission. For this boss, either Slick Ice or Freezing Winds is viable. I personally recommend Freezing Winds as it's easier to play around and a bit more consistent damage profile with perhaps a lower ceiling than Slick Ice, but higher average. Regardless of which legendary you go with, your rotation is pretty much similar. You're going to precast Blizzard to help lower the cooldown of Frozen Orb so it's up both on pole and by the first pillar. With that in mind, my personal opener is Blizzard precast into Frozen Orb, Rune of Power, my normal single target rotation, then Icy Veins as soon as my Rune of Power ends. For my character, this leads to me extending the Icy Veins into the first pillar and having it back up for the second pillar as well. Some people prefer to cast Icy Veins on pole. But if you Rune of Power once Icy Veins Rune of Power ends, it won't necessarily line up with the pillar nicely. One thing to be mindful of if you're doing Rune of Power into Icy Veins but want to hold off Icy Veins to extend it into the first pillar for your character is be mindful of Chain Slam timings and try not to Icy Veins such that you'll get dragged mid Rune of Power and lose uptime. The way Chain Slams work is by selecting one of the four furthest targets at random and giving them the debuff. It'll always be one of the four furthest targets. On Mythic, you assign specific people each time and they simply move further out than anyone else to bait the slam. On Heroic, if you're not chained with anyone and want to avoid getting the debuff, simply avoid being one of the four furthest targets. If you get selected for the chain slam, make sure you use the boss's roars to get pushed back into position in order to increase DPS uptime. If you don't have to soak the chain slam but feel like soaking without a partner to help out your healers, you can also alter time before you get yoinked, then alter time back. Though I would recommend not soaking chain slams if you don't have to. As with any fight, you can use Ice Flows or procs to dodge falling rubble. If you do get hit by the rubble, you can Ice Block to remove the stun. Or very situationally, and only if you know exactly what you're doing and you're running Ice Flows, you could in theory blink to break the stun provided you're not going to break your chains. Make sure, especially if you're running Freezing Winds, to save Frozen Orbs and either Natural Rune of Power or Icy Veins Rune of Power for each pillar. If you're wearing a damage dealing trinket, such as Glyph, make sure you save it for pillars as it'll deal double damage during that phase. One thing you can do that's extra beneficial for Freezing Winds is to shoot the Frozen Orb at the pillar roughly 4 seconds before the boss will physically be there. If you're running Slick Ice, this saves you a global, and if you're running Freezing Winds, you're actually generating extra Fingers of Frost out of this. The reason for this is due to how Frozen Orb actually works. Frozen Orb will last up to 15 seconds against a wall or object and then disappear. Freezing Orb also lasts up to 10 seconds upon reaching a target. So you can artificially extend the duration of Frozen Orb with Freezing Winds for an extra 5 seconds for extra Fingers of Frost by making sure it doesn't hit a target for the first 5 seconds of its life. 
This way, you're still generating the extra Fingers of Frost procs from Freezing Wind since it's time-based and not damage-based, or you're freeing up that global during the pillar while still funneling the full 10 second duration of Frozen Orb into the boss during his vulnerability phase. All that being said, your pillar rotation is going to be setting up for whatever burst you might have in the form of Freezing Winds, Rune of Power, or on use trinkets, followed by your regular single target rotation. On Mythic, everybody gets a chain partner and you have to periodically spread out during the stomps to avoid splashing raid damage. Additionally, pillars now break into four shards that each need to be soaked by a group and then each of those shards breaks off into two additional shards that also need to be soaked. As mentioned earlier, chain slams are now only handled by four designated people. On Mythic, because everyone gets a chain partner and because you can't stack due to the spread out mechanic, I wait until I find my chain partner before I set down my rune of power, and the rest of my rotation is the same as heroic. For this boss, either Freezing Winds or Glacial Fragments works fine. Freezing Winds works best for heroic, as it's basically a two target fight. Glacial Fragments will pad higher on Mythic, though I'd still recommend Freezing Winds for progression and save Glacial Fragments for Mythic farm or parse runs only. As with any multi-target fight, Blizzard usage and uptime is very important as it helps lower the cooldown on Frozen Orb, and more Frozen Orbs leads to more Fingers of Frost procs and damage with Freezing Winds, not to mention having Blizzard active also activates Glacial Fragments, extra Freezing Orb generation is beneficial to the base Frost Mage kit regardless of legendary choice. As with previous bosses, combinations of Alter Time and Blink, Door of Shadows, procs, or shimmers slash ice flows can be used to deal with mechanics such as blades and eruptions. If you're running ice flows and you get crystallized on you, you can alter time, blink to break the stun, then alter time back to gain a tiny bit of DPS uptime. You could also ice block to break the stun, though I wouldn't recommend wasting it on that. Likewise, if the gargoyle wants to feast on you, you can use blink to escape. Usages of Ice Block for this fight include anything from removing the bleeds on Heroic and Below, removing the Seismic Upheaval debuff so you can stand still on DPS during Grishnald phases, and allowing you to soak with the debuff or double soak eruptions on Heroic and Below, as well as removing the damage dealing dot slash healer debuff. You can DPS commandos during the intermission and dunk orbs faster to get out of the transition phase quicker and get a better DPS parse. Remember, the faster orbs get spawned and fed to Renathal, the faster you finish the transition, the better your damage parts will be. On Mythic, there's a few changes. Namely, there's skirmisher adds in non-transition phases, which start pushing you off the platform once they dip below 30% health and won't stop until dead. This effect stacks, and if too many are left above 0% health but below 30%, you're just going to wipe to Category 5 wins. In addition to this, bleeds are no longer cleared by immunities. Skirmisher adds also periodically teleport behind players and apply bleeds in addition to the blades. During transition phases, there's now a shield on commando sub 30% health, and if that shield doesn't get out DPS, they explode and will most likely wipe the raid. Whenever a player dunks an orb, anyone within, I believe, a 40 yard range of Renathal, including the dunker, gets knocked back. So for the entire intermission phase, people have to be further than 40 yards away from Renathal at all times except when they're the ones dunking the orbs. Lastly, there's enough eruptions to cover a considerable chunk of the platform, but the debuff duration is significantly shortened so you can soak each and every set. As a tiny fun fact, you can avoid the transition knockback by standing in this spot. This fight has three very different phases. For the first phase, you're basically dealing with adds and bursts. Your goal is to get your debuff down to two stacks or less by soaking cleansing pains, else you'll die due to failing the movement speed check at the phase 1 to phase 2 transition. When the adds are about to spawn, you can set up by precasting Rune of Power, Blizzard, roughly where some adds will spawn, Frozen Orb, and then spam Arcane Explosion while jumping. It won't make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things, but jumping while doing an ability like Arcane Explosion does increase the radius of it very slightly, as demonstrated in this clip. Outside of ad faces, you basically single target the boss as normal. 
The only other mechanic you have to deal with as a DPS in phase one is the Night Hunter lines and soaks. If you have the Night Hunter on you, make a nice long line through the raid so people can easily soak, or you can ice block it outside the raid if you feel like, though even on Mythic you don't need to do this. While he's transitioning to phase two, you can technically hit him for extra damage so long as you clear the circle first. Alternatively, if you have zero stacks of debuff going into the march, you can just freely use your blinks and other abilities to get to him and start DPSing sooner. If your raid lead allows, your best bet is going to be funneling damage onto Sire by casting Blizzard on the melee Cabalists, Sire, and Remornia, then using that Frozen Orb cooldown reduction to send out more Frozen Orbs, and thus more Fingers of Frost if running Freezing Winds, into the boss. In general, it's always nice to know your panic buttons. Should you ever stand in a crescendo, you can blink back onto the platform if you react fast enough, alter time if you think it's unavoidable, or simply ice block, though I'd reserve ice block for massacre. For phase 3, cleave Cabalists with Sire if possible and applicable, else it's basically a pure single target fight with a lot of forced movement to and from the boss. For the first Fatal Finesse Soak, you can alter time as you start soaking, then reactivate after you get gripped. As mentioned earlier, this phase will have a lot of hand instruction grips and shattering pain knockbacks, a combination of alter time, blinks, door of shadows, and shimmer, ice flows, or proc usage will make this phase manageable. You'll always know what's coming next, so if it's a knockback, you can get close to the boss and still be in range after the knockback finishes. On Mythic, there's a few differences. For Phase 1, you now start with 6 stacks of the debuff, and stacking on top of X players for cleansing pain will cleanse an additional X debuffs off everyone in the stack. So 3 players stacked each lose 3 debuffs and spawn 3 times the adds. Speaking of 3 and stacking, there's now 3 Night Hunter lines that you basically intersect so the tanks can soak all three at the same time. In phase two, there's now four new sets of adds on each balcony. Generally, the range stat is sincere, but it's a horrible add to do as frost. The best you can do for it is alter time, door of shadows to it, drop a frozen orb, alter time back, and then pop CDs. The better option is Evershade, as you can basically refresh your entire cooldown kit by the time you move on to the next add, which is probably Gloomvale. For Gloomvale, you can alter time, blink past her, wait until Hand of Destruction goes off, Frozen Orb, alter time back, pop a rune, and get to DPSing. For movement between platforms, you can use Warlock Gates, Door of Shadows, or let Hand of Destruction bring you back. The rest of phase 2 is basically the same as heroic, you funnel off Cabalists onto Sire while making sure all of your cooldowns will be up at the start of phase 3. Phase 3 is a tiny bit different in that there's two realms, Normal Realm and Mirror Realm. If anyone from one realm touches anyone else from the other realm, you both die due to the neutralized mechanic. This is the last DPS check of the tier, and you'll have to kill Sire before he fills the room with red. Make sure you're optimally using your CDs and movement abilities to dump as much damage as you can onto the boss while still dropping off Fatal Finesse and doing soaks properly. So for example, alter timing right before a knockback so you can keep DPSing. Has this ever happened to you? Have no fear, simply pop mirror image, create some distance between you and the boss, Alter Time and Door of Shadows away from the boss. Reactivate Alter Time before you catch those hands. Put the other mirrors on him. Cast while he's casting. He can't melee you while he's casting. Blink and run away. Ice block and wait for Mirrors of Torment to give you a brain freeze. Wait until they're casting a long ability. Remove block and ice him. No tank, no healers, no teammates, no problem. I hope the video was helpful and please leave any questions you might have in the comments.